And now you are in for a very special treat. We're going to go back in time and listen to the person for whom this program is dedicated, to the legendary Marcus Garvey. Coming to you in the person of Mr. Ron Bob Simple. Mr. Simple, this is a very special presentation. Brothers and sisters, good evening. Sisters and brothers, good evening. The black race is one of the branches of the human race. As a section of humanity, he occupies a position in the world at the present time most uncomfortable and most unfavorable. Black people are subjects of ostracism. It is sad that our humanity has shown us no more love, no greater sympathy than we are experiencing. Wherever you go throughout the world, the black man is discarded, is ostracized, is relegated to the laws and things, social, political, and economical. This therefore suggests a problem and one that must be solved. We in this section of the world are not entirely free from this unkind and unsympathetic behavior among the groups our races around us. But since man has been placed on his own responsibility, whether he be black, white, or yellow, he must act in his own account. We will not unduly whine or complain, but reason among ourselves and see what can be done to remedy this state of affairs. Life is a conflict. You have to fight your way through it, whether you will it or not. Those of us who fight most stubbornly live, and to them go the laurels, the palms, and the triumph of our civilization and world. We unfortunately have not been trained to the truths of life, paradoxically so. May I say something to you tonight to give you a true understanding of yourself, so that the same glory and success attained by others who understand themselves would also be yours. Man with a true knowledge of himself is a superb and supreme creature of creation. When Mother Nature created man, she deprived him of nothing. He was given the faculty of understanding all things around him, and that faculty of understanding has not been taken away from him. None of his senses have been taken away from him. So there is no excuse for the black man because of what has been provided for him. Do you know what history means? History is the guidepost of a race. It's the inspiration of future generations either to stand still or go forward, to revenge or be revenged. For 250 years, we heard this cry in the grave, Garvey, we have waited for this day and time. It's not because of how we look. If we must be strong, we must come together. If we must come together, we can only do so through the system of organization. Because the first black heavyweight boxing champion of the world was Jack Johnson. He was a strong man. He was strong wherever he went. He beat his white opponents in Australia. He'd beaten them in the United States and he can beat them wherever they presented themselves. The African race could be like Jack Johnson. If it is strong in Africa, then it could be strong everywhere. For 250 years, we have struggled under the burden and rigors of slavery. We were maimed, we were brutalized, we were ravaged in every way. We are men. We have hopes, we have passions, we have feelings, we have desires just like any other race. The cries raised all over the world of Canada for the Canadians, of America for the Americans, of England for the English, of France for the French, of Germany for the Germans. Do you think it unreasonable that we, the blacks of the world, should raise a cry of Africa for the Africans? The Negro is a man. We represent the new Negro. His back is not yet against the wall. We do not want his back against the wall because that would be a peculiar and desperate position. We do not want him there. It's because of this that we are asking for a fair compromise. Well, the Belgians have control of the Belgian Congo, which they cannot use. They have not the resources to develop, not the intelligence. The French have more territory than they can develop. There are certain parts of Africa in which you cannot live at all. So it is for you to come together and give us a United States of Africa. We are not going to be a race without a country. God never intended it and we are not going to abuse God's confidence in us as men. We are men, human beings, capable of the same acts as any other race, possessing under fair circumstances the same intelligence as any other race. Africa has been sleeping, not dead, only sleeping. Today, Africa is walking around not only on our feet, but on our brains. You can enslave us were done for 300 years, the bodies of men. You can shackle the hands of men. You can shackle the feet of men. You can imprison the bodies of men. But you cannot shackle or imprison the minds of men. <laughs> Dive down black men and dig. Reach up black men and women and pull all nature's knowledge to you. 
Turn you around and make a conquest of everything, north and south, east and west. And then when you will have wrought well, you will have merited God's blessings. And as you bow down to the white man today, so will other races bow down to you and call you a race of masters because of the superiority of your minds and your achievements. God made man lord of his creation, gave him possession and ownership on the world. And you have been so darn lazy that you've allowed the other fellow to run away with the whole world. And now he's bluffing you and telling you that the world belongs to him and that you have no part in it. I don't have to apologize to anybody for being black because God Almighty knew exactly what he was doing when he made me black. You race of cowards. You race of imbeciles. You race of gut for nothings. If you cannot do what other nations have done, what other races have done, then you had better die. Can we do it? Yeah. We can do it. Yeah, can. Because any leadership that teaches you to depend upon another race is a leadership that will enslave you. Yeah. Let me say that again. Any leadership that teaches you to depend upon another race is a leadership that will enslave you. They gave leadership to our four parents and that leadership made them slaves. But we've decided to find a leadership of our own to make ourselves free men. Babylon did it. Assyria did it. France under Napoleon did it. Britain under William Pitt, Earl of Chatham did it. America under George Washington did it. Africa with 400 million black people can do it. If you cannot do it, if you are not prepared to do it, then you had better die. Because when the history of mine is complete, future generations shall have in their hands the guide by which they shall know the sins of your 20th century. I know and I know you to believe in time. But we shall wait patiently for 200 years, if need be, to face our enemies through our posterity. In life I shall be the same. In death I shall be a terror to the foes of African liberty. If death has power, then count on me to be the real Marcus Garvey I would like to be. If I may come in a plague or a pestilence or as God would have me, then be assured that I shall never desert you and make your enemies triumph over you. Will I not go to hell a million times for you? If I die in Atlanta, my work shall only just begin. But I shall live in the physical or the spiritual to see the day of Africa's glory. Look for me in the world when I'm a storm. Look for me all around you. For in God's grace and blessings, I shall come back and bring with me countless millions of black men and women who have died in America, who have died in the West Indies, and who have died in Africa to aid you in the life for liberty, freedom, and life. The world today has gone drunk and crazy with its power. And by such true injustice, fraud and lies have crushed the unfortunate. But if I'm apparently crushed by the system of influence and misdirected power, my car shall rise again to plague the conscience of the corrupt. For this I'm happy to suffer and even die. For I will write the history of the millions that are coming and leave the posterity to reckon with the host for the deeds of their fathers. If others laugh at you, return the laughter to them. If they honor you, return the compliment with equal force. They have no more right to dishonor, disrespect, and disregard your feeling in manhood than you have in dealing with them. Honor them when they honor you. Disrespect and disregard them when they vilely treat you. Their arrogance is but skin deep. Assumption that has no foundation in morals or in law. But they have sprung from the same family tree of obscurity as we have. Their history is as rude in its primitiveness as ours. When they were embracing the arts and sciences on the banks of the Nile. Their ancestors were drinking blood out of the skulls of the human dead. And eating raw meat from wild beasts for centuries. Even as they have accused us of doing their cannibalism was more prolonged than ours. When we had reached the noonday of progress, they were still living in holes with bats, rats, and other insects and animals. After we had unfathomed the mystery of the stars and reduced the heavenly constellation to minute and regular calculus, they were still backwards men living in ignorance and in blatant darkness. The world today is indebted to us for the benefits of civilization. They stole our arts and sciences from Africa. So why should we be ashamed of ourselves? Like the great church of Rome, black people the whole world over should practice one faith 
and that of confidence in themselves with one God, one aim, and one destiny. Because we are the descendants of a suffering people. We are the descendants of a people determined to suffer no longer. Many men and women as black as I am, and even more so, had believed themselves white under the West Indian order of society. I was simply an impossible man to use openly the term Negro, yet everyone beneath his breath was calling the black man a nigger. I had to decide whether to please my friends and be one of the black whites of Jamaica and be reasonably prosperous or come out openly and help improve and protect the integrity of the black millions and suffer. I decided to do the latter. There is no future for people who deny their past. My four parents, my grandparents, my mother, my father did not suffer and die to give me an education to slight, oppress, or discourage my people. Whatsoever education I acquired out of their sacrifice of over 300 years, I shall use for the salvation of the 400 million black people of the world. And the day when I forsake my people, may God Almighty say, there shall be no more light for you. I unequivocally rejected the racist assumption of much white American Christianity. Namely, that God had created the black man inferior and that he intended Negroes to be a servant class. He was of wood and drawers of water. I predicated my view of the man and doctrines of Imago Dei. All men, regardless of color, are created in the image of God. From this premise followed equality of all men and the brotherhood of all men. The biblical injunction of Acts 17, 26 reminds you that he created of one blood all nations of men to dwell on the face of the earth. Well, I was most interested in brotherhood within his own race. Because if Negroes are created in God's image and Negroes are black, then God must in some sense be black. If the white man has an idea of a white God, let him worship his God as he desires. We have found a new ideal. Because whilst our God has no color, and yet it is human to see everything through one's own spectacles. And since the white people have seen their God through their white spectacles, we have only now started to see our God through our own spectacles. But we believe in the God of Ethiopia, the everlasting God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, the one God of all ages. That is the God in whom we believe. But we shall worship him through the spectacles of Ethiopia. Do you know what it is to be a man? To be a man is to be a resemblance of the creator. The image of the creator. If you are conscious of the fact that you bear the image of the creator, then you are a man. Man is a religious being. You may be a Christian. You may be a Mohammedan. You may be a Rastaman. That is your religion. We are entitled to our own religious beliefs. Because the white world has always tried to rob and discredit us of our history. They tell us that Tutankhamun, the king that reigned about the year 1350 BC, was not a black man. That the ancient civilization and the pharaohs was not of our race. But that does not make the truth unreal. Because many students of impartial mind know that we once ruled the world. When white men were barbarians and savages living in caves, thousands of our professionals at that time taught in the universities of Alexandria, then the seat of learning. No black man shall be truly respected until the race as a whole has emancipated itself to self-achievement and progress from universal prejudice. Back in the days of slavery, race mixture and miscegenation had occurred because the African woman had no protection from the slave master. So there is no need today for black people to themselves freely continue a practice that smacked so much of slavery. Black people should see beauty in their own kind and not try to bleach their skins and be otherwise than what they are. One of our problems historically is that we've always been reacting. Reacting to initiatives taken by other people. You cannot depend upon another race to free you. That's a basic law of human existence. Because I came into the Caucasian culture at a time when the white man still had a need for the black man's labor. I preached and penetrated the black man's consciousness to such a degree that the white man felt threatened by me demanding and commanding so much black time and attention. Whites find it hard to sit idly by and see this black man take their slave labor away, especially back to Africa. Who then would bear the white man's burden? But I believe 
that my blood shall pay the remission for which future generations of our race shall be declared free. Freedom of opportunity. Freedom of action are things that we need. Because vile thoughts bring to vile people in vile times. You could not tell me in the 1920s that 90 years later this world would be infested with neutron bombs, AIDS, homelessness, terrorism, laser beams, and visible nuclear devastation. However, were I alive today, I would still ask for my people's upliftment, self-esteem, self-respect in a world gone crazy with individualism. I never taught racism, but rather pride and dignity in one's race. With God's dearest blessings, I'll leave you for a while. One love.